tell me about your swimming instructor because that was part of your dream. Yes. Reliving your childhood uh, to take swimming lessons. Yeah, which is a skill I think everybody should have. So mm -hmm. when I was in New York, I thought this is a great place to take lessons because I don't know anyone here who will see me in my bathing suit, which is half the fear as an adult woman of learning how to swim. So I took private lessons at the Y in Manhattan. And I thought I was, you know, just under the radar and nobody was noticing that I was there with these five-year-olds taking lessons down the lane until one day I was um, on my third lesson, I think, and I changed and I was on the other side of the glass just watching the kids swim. And this man walked up in a Speedo and knocked on the window and gave me a thumbs up, like, great, you're progressing in your <laughs> lessons. And then later I was talking to another woman who was talking about my lessons mm -hmm. as well, and I realized actually everybody is watching me. I'm on me. display. Exactly. It is New York after yeah, all. But they yes. were all cheering for me as well, which and was And you're nice. not a natural swimmer by no. any means, but can you swim now a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm decent. I need to keep mm -hmm. going. I don't think I could fend off a shark attack and swim around it, but I, uh, <laughs> no. I have the basic skills. But as a child, you, you didn't go to the pools and you didn't go ocean swimming and you didn't do any of that. You didn't go to the lakes. You didn't have a cottage. No, Indians don't camp and they don't really swim and it, it's just not something mm -hmm. that you would pick up naturally the way other kids might. But uh, Scooby-Doo, anytime. Still. I'll still watch <laughs> it if I can. When You know when you're in a foreign city, it, some part of your childhood brings you solace. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, here you are in New York and you're alone. Did you have a television? I went out and bought a television, which people thought was very odd to be in the city that never sleeps and want a television, but it was really one of my comforts. And one day I was walking and I was looking at all these box sets that people were selling on the street, and somebody was selling a box set of Dallas. So I bought <laughs> season one and two, and I would go home if I had nothing to do, and I would watch that, and it was a kind of a fun mm -hmm. memory of watching that when I was a kid with my whole family. Take me back to uh, childhood on the school grounds. Uh, did you experience racism because you were one of the few right I, I didn't at school everybody was very nice at school I think that they were aware and I was aware that I was of a different culture but it was never anything that we mm. really discussed it wasn't um, something that would ever come up in conversation there it was just later uh, subtle things would come up I, I also write in the book when somebody told a racist joke which they didn't realize was racist and I didn't either and you listen to <laughs> these things and you have no idea that the race they're referring to is yours and you listen and you laugh as if you understand and it's you know you realize it's something that you're learning from other people mm -hmm. and they don't realize it either no but as you know uh, Kitchener well last time I was there pretty white very, it's really changed a I'm lot. Sure it's a it lot has. more multicultural, but before mm -hmm. it was called Kitchener, it was called Berlin. So that yes. does tell you that you know the heritage is is very German. And when I was growing up, was predominantly mm -hmm. a Caucasian town. What else did you do uh, to experience second childhood? You learned to swim. I did. You learned to tap dance. Mm -hmm. I went to Disney World with my younger sister, which was also a lot of fun. We had always wanted to go there when we were kids, and uh, so we went as two adult women in the line for the Dumbo ride with all of the kids who were dressed up as Buzz Lightyear, and that was a funny experience as mm -hmm. well. And uh, I never really drove a lot when I was a kid. I just I didn't want to, and I didn't have the confidence, and I thought, once again, something I should t a regret I should leave behind in childhood, and I should drive more. So I started doing that a lot more. I would take I took tennis lessons because I was the only friend who had tried out for the tennis team who didn't make it in the seventh grade. And so I just went back and did mm. a multitude of things that I but wish I had. But I bet I had. you watched a lot of tennis on television. I that was my whole <laughs> summer. One summer was Boris mm -hmm. Becker, Andre Agassi, uh, watching that over and over. Mm -hmm. What do you think you missed? Really, now that you're 30 and evolved and you have a successful writing career and you've been a TV publicist, so when you really do the math, uh, and I know regrets are useless because mm -hmm. we can't go back, but is there something you wish you had experienced as a teenage girl, a seven-year-old? I think that's what I also learned through the book is that what I felt I was missing out on maybe was something different. So back then I felt like I was missing out on all the social interaction and it was making me stand out more from the crowd because I didn't, you know, when people would go out, especially as a teenager, it becomes very obvious who doesn't go out. And I say in the book that my favorite excuse was that it was my cousin's birthday. So my friends mm -hmm. were saying that one year they were going to get a calendar and write all my cousin's birthdays in <laughs> and see if they matched up the next mm -hmm. year, which they wouldn't. But I felt like 
they would come back on a Monday, they would have these great stories to tell, and I wasn't a part of that, and I was missing all the social sure. interaction. But looking back on it, I realized I still had those great friends, and we had our memories together, mm -hmm. and maybe I didn't miss out on as much, and I'm obviously a lot luckier than a lot of other kids who would have had uh, experiences harsher than mine or have tough childhoods because I didn't have a tough childhood. No, and you graduated valedictorian. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you didn't uh, get into drugs no. and, or rob banks yeah. or anything. That's a good thing. Uh, did you miss having uh, girlfriends uh, like you in similar, in similar homes? And by that I mean other immigrants who had come to this country and they had, could experience... You, in other words, you could call up your girlfriend and say, my parents are so strict. They won't let me do anything. I did hide and that a lot when I was growing up because I didn't feel like my friends would understand that. But I think if I'd had that support system of somebody else who did understand that, mm -hmm. maybe it would have been a bit sure. of an easier experience. I'm sure even lunch because I doubt you were having peanut butter sandwiches. Actually, I was for a good were two you? years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I wasn't, when I was younger, I would take a roti and I would have matari for my snacks. And then later I realized uh, I, don't, I don't fit in if I have this stuff and I'm going to have a peanut mm -hmm. butter sandwich every day. Well, it, this is delightful. It's a little bit like eat, pray, love with a young uh, Indo-Canadian twist. <laughs> you know, because you've done it. What now after this? I'm writing a follow-up book, so it's uh, similar, but it's a book of essays, and I want to keep going with writing. Mm -hmm. Why not? Thank you. Thank you. Rupinder Gill on the outside uh, looking Indian.